Without taxes, salaries cannot be paid. Without taxes, roads cannot be built. Without taxes, our lives and, and, and property would not be secured. That was the Leadership Public Service Person of the Year 2022 award winner, Muhammad Nami, Executive Chairman, Federal Inland Revenue Service. On Tuesday, 31st January 2023, Mr. Nami was conferred with the Public Service Person of the Year 2022 award at the annual Leadership Newspaper Award Ceremony. Big, big news coming on the heels of the humongous tax collection performance of the FRS in the year 2022. Even though the award that was given to Mr. Nami was based on the 2021 performance of the FRS under his watch. The next award is the Public Service Person of the Year. And this will go to the Chairman, Federal Inland Revenue Service, Mr. Mohamed Nami. Leadership Award 2022, Leadership Public Service Person of the Year 2022, Mohammed Maman Nami, for his bold and unprecedented reform of the Nigeria's tax administration, including the deployment of technology, data, and strategic intelligence, leading to the highest ever tax revenue collection of 6.405 trillion Naira in a year. Mohammed Mama Nami is the Leadership Public Service Person of the Year. The award was received on behalf of the Executive Chairman FRS by Mr. M. L. Abubaka, Coordinating Director, Executive Chairman's Group at the FRS. We cannot fail to mention that the difference between the 2021 performance which earned Mr. Nami this award and that of 2022 is a whopping sum of 3.7 trillion Naira. Surely, a revolution is afoot at the FRS. Later in an interview with the press, Mr. Nami dedicated the award to the entire rank and file of the FRS and in fact, renamed the award the Leadership Public Institution of the Year 2022. First, let me give glory to God and that this award is uh, not an award to me as a person. So it's not about what I feel but what we feel as FRS family. This is an award to about 11,000 people that work in FRS. So we all feel great. We feel honored that for the first time in the history of our country, FRS is being recognized as the public service institution of the year. I wouldn't want to call it Mohammed Namia's public servant of the year. So it makes us feel good where we feel honored and we now feel more indebted to Nigerians that we're going to do more. We cannot thank the media enough, particularly the leadership newspaper that has given us or recognized us today because they continue to educate taxpayers on what tax revenues or tax funds are used for in our country. And the record-breaking 2022 collection of 10.1 trillion Naira. When we came on board uh, as a team, uh, we met a service which has consistently been collecting between 5.2, 5.3 trillion for about nine years. So with the impact of the reforms that we have implemented, we moved from that to 6.4 trillion in the year 2021. And what has happened in 2022 is that we have a jump from that same figure by about 3.7 trillion to now raise the collections from uh, 6.4 in 2021 to 10.1 trillion in the year 2022. On next steps. What we want to do, we've started from last year, we've appointed uh, taxpayers in telecommunication companies to now act as an agent of collection so that if you submit uh, as a, a service provider uh, a bill of 10,000 naira to them, they will deduct as source the VAT aspect of the bill. We don't longer, we, we are in a hurry. We want those monies deducted as source and remit to us. What we have also done is that we want to take the collaboration further. We are not just limiting our collaboration to the local stakeholders. We are also collaborating with the international communities to make sure that we have seamless flow of uh, information that we require for tax administration. And then the last thing we want to continue to do is 
we improve our automation to make sure that we uh, are able to serve our taxpayers better than we did in the previous years. Congratulations to Mr. Nami. We are sure that the best is yet to come. Welcome once again as we go into our tax education segment. Today, we are looking at withholding tax. Withholding tax is an advanced payment of income tax. Withholding tax was introduced into the Nigerian tax space in 1977 to minimize the incidence of tax evasion by ensuring that more persons are brought into the tax and through disclosure from the larger taxpayers as to whom they receive goods and services from and to whom they make payments for such goods and services. Withholding tax is regulated by the various income tax acts and the withholding tax regulations issued from time to time. Withholding tax is not a separate tax on its own and does not confer an exemption from filing of annual tax returns by the company which has suffered withholding tax. The tax is normally to be deducted at source when a payment is to be made to the beneficiary. Withholding tax rates are usually 10% or 5% depending on the type of transaction and who is involved, individual or corporate body. For example, the applicable rate for rent, interest and dividends is 10% for both companies and individuals. For commission, consultancy, technical and service fees, it is 10% for companies and 5% for individuals. For construction and building contracts, as well as for other forms of contracts other than outright sale and purchase of goods in the ordinary course of business, the rate is uniform at 5% for both companies and individuals. We re-emphasize that withholding tax is an advance payment of tax on account to be applied as tax credit to settle income tax liability. It is not a separate tax. Tax withheld should be remitted within 21 days or the date the duty to deduct arises, whichever is earlier. How does withholding tax work? When a company or an individual supplies goods or provides service to another company, an invoice is usually raised as evidence of the transaction. If, for example, the amount payable by the purchaser is 1 million naira and the relevant withholding tax rate is 10%, then at the point of payment, the purchaser will deduct 100,000 naira from the payment due to the supplier and remit the sum so deducted to the relevant tax authority. If at the end of the financial year the tax payable is 5 million naira and the aggregate of all withholding tax credit notes is 2 million naira, the net tax payable to the relevant tax authority will be 3 million naira. Withholding tax credit notes can only be used to offset companies' income tax. Withholding tax administration has undergone a lot of transformation in recent time away from the old system of fiscal credit notes. First was a situation where the taxpayer received the credit note on the company's dedicated email address. That started in the year 2016 and made life easier for taxpayers. Automation of the system has enabled the FRS to make the administration of withholding tax a pleasurable experience for both the tax collector and the taxpayer. And talking about automation, Tax Pro Max, which came into being in June 2021, has taken withholding tax administration to the next level. To file withholding tax on Tax Pro Max, the taxpayer is required to first log on to www.taxpromax.frs.gov.ng and then click on Login as displayed on the screen. The next step is to fill in email address and password and then click on Login. When you log in, the system takes you to the next page, which will display different tax the taxpayer may wish to perform on the home page. From the dashboard, click on Group Taxes, which will display the different tax types the taxpayer needs to file and pay. 
Under the list of group taxes, click on withholding tax. Then it takes you to the next page, which requires you to take necessary actions. For the returning currency, in actual fact, currency of transaction, click on Naira. And for the returning withholding tax type, click on Others. Then download sample template to fill in the details of the withholding tax schedule to be uploaded. After filling in the details, in this case, we are filing and paying on behalf of a third party. Save the documents for upload. Then go back and click on Choose File and uphold the withholding tax schedule and click on Proceed. The system takes you to the next page, which will display the details of the uploaded document and then click on Proceed. The system takes you to the next page, which will display the withholding tax amount you are to pay and the different payment options. Then click on Remitter and that takes you to the next page, which will generate your unique payment reference number. Then click on Pay Online if you wish to pay online or click on Print Remitter Invoice if you wish to pay in the bank. See, life just got better with Tax Pro Max. You are still on to tax matters. The year 2023 budget of the federal government was passed by the National Assembly on Wednesday the 28th of December 2022 and was subsequently signed into law by President Muhammadu Buhari on Tuesday the 3rd of January 2023. As you already know, the total budget is in the sum of 21 trillion 827 billion naira. The budget parameters include oil benchmark at $75 per barrel, exchange rate at 435.57 naira to $1. Daily oil production benchmark is put at 1.69 million barrels per day. Other parameters include GDP at 3.75% and inflation rate at 17.16%. On January 27, 2023, the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria, in keeping with its tradition of always being on top of matters concerning the economy of Nigeria, held a webinar on the 2023 Nigeria budget with the theme, Federal Government of Nigeria Budget 2023 and the Change in Guard, What Next? Mr. Adeshino Adedayo, President CITN, flagged off the webinar with these remarks. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Today's engagement is portion to the tenets of the CITN, which is inch on adding meaningful value to national development by being the heartbeat of the tax profession in Nigeria. We are bringing taxation and fiscal policy issues to the front burner in the Nigerian fiscal space. The 2023 budget of fiscal sustainability and transition is a key document that will define the nation's fiscal and economic policies for the year 2023. It will be a reflection of the government's priorities and objectives and a blueprint for how the nation will achieve its economic and social goals. Chairman of session was Dr. Mark Abani, while the executive chairman of FRS was represented by Mr. Najim Ajela. The lead paper presenter was Dr. Oyebode Oyetunde, the Executive Director of Nigeria at the Africa Development Bank. In terms of key parameters, the key one to look at is really benchmark production. Here we're forecasting 1.69. We did 1.2 um, as at November last year average. If we can get this number to move closer to two or above two, that's where our revenue problems will be solved. The bottom line is the closer that the budget outturns, the actual budget outturns, align with these numbers in the positive territory domain, the better the budget performance. Dr. Oyetunde had special words of commendation for Mr. Nami's administration at the FRS. All revenues have been outstripped by non-oil. So we're de definitely relying a lot more on non-oil revenues, which have been more stable, more consistent. A lot of support for Nami's incredible efforts at automating and trying to use ICT technology to incentivize greater revenue drive at the same time protecting taxpayers' confidential information. In conclusion. Food and fiscal security is so important. We saw that under COVID. But civil service reforms are also critically important. We People complain we give a lot of salaries to civil servants. It's not enough. 
We need a lot more civil service to service 200 million of us. We need a lot more police and security service 2 million of us. So these challenges around the budget, the budget is too big, it's not. We should easily be spending 30, 40 trillion if for a country our size, if we can raise the revenue. This government has done a lot more in terms of critical infrastructure, trying to deal with the power sector reforms which have gone through, improving transport and trade. And then of course, human capital. It's not just about building roads and bridges. How about the people that cross over? This slide basically shows that we've seen a major shift in terms of revenues. But the key thing to note here is if you get the numbers, it's always been 80, 20, all to no, no. 70, 30, all to no, no. Under this government, it's gone 50, 50. And in fact, it's trended more in recent years towards non all revenue. If only we had the all revenues coming through, you could have seen how much revenue would have gotten and how much, how less much debt we've had to incur as a result funding basic needs. And at the end of the day, we have to recognize that taxes are the price we pay for civilization. And this money has to be funded by someone. In closing, I'll focus on some areas I feel the next government, from my experience, little experience, will have to focus on. Light manufacturing, agribusiness, processing, petrochemicals, and making sure we add value to our exports. This is the where the growth is going to go. The paper presentation was followed by the intervention of the discussants. Except... We are proposing to remove subsidy in the middle of the year. We don't know how the response will be. Economically, is something that is desirable very fundamentally, but again, labor has been unduly quiet and that is giving me some concerns, but obviously that is the way to go. I'm talking about what we need to do as we transit to the new administration from a business and policy point of view. Our expectation that we need to move very quickly on our oil and gas sector reform, because this, the sector has been bleeding, the economy has been bleeding through the sector for several decades. So we need accelerated reforms in the downstream oil sector so that you can have more investment in the sector. We can address the issue of subsidy and all the associated corruption, issues of oil theft, inefficiency, loss of revenue. All of these things are needed to actually scale up investment in the sector. Then we also need urgent reforms in our foreign exchange environment. One of the biggest policy problems that we face in the private sector uh, since, the, since the inception of this administration is the quality of the foreign exchange policy. Uh, we need to you know, put an end to the arbitrage. We need to stop the corruption. We need to unlock inflows because the current policy is blocking inflows of investment into the economy. And just as the speaker said, if the economy is not growing, the revenue cannot grow. So the current foreign exchange policy is something that we need to urgently reform, to make it a lot more market reflective, market friendly, investment friendly, so that we can unlock inflows of foreign exchange, we can unlock investments, we can unlock opportunities from foreign direct investment and foreign portfolio investments. Once we realize that tax is even, uh, you know, a kind of withdrawal from the economy, and we say, okay, government expenditure, we have to increase government expenditure. Government expenditure on what? Because all this borrowing that we have seen, we have not seen the effect, the positive effect on the economy. Truly, we have seen some in development in infrastructure, but uh, it has not gone too far. And it has, because the major infra infrastructure that is required in this country, if you have to tell us the truth, has to do with electricity. It's part of what is causing increase in production for, for, for the private sector and creating serious problem for them to expand. Even the small and medium scale enterprises, whenever they get loan, they have to think of how to get, how to get generator to, to, finance, to, to, to do their business. They have to think of how to get a petrol or diesel to finance their, you know, to, to run their business and all those things. I have about one or two major takeaway from this presentation, which I also want you to take note that uh, Nigeria is faced with uh, numerous challenges, ranging from uh, global and local challenges. In terms of the global challenge, as rightly noted, the high interest rates and the rising food prices is a concern. 
And in terms of the local challenges, we will be aware that presently Nigeria is faced with a lot of insecurity and then rising debt and crude oil theft. These are major challenges which may likely mitigate against getting revenue to fund the expenditure of, uh, of the government. There is therefore need for FRS and uh, various stakeholders to ensure that we collaborate with the service so that we'll be able to provide the needed revenue for the budget, to fund the budget. Because of uh, this issue of uh, low revenue mobilization, it typically translates to high borrowing, which increase the cost of servicing the debt. So there's therefore need for us to look for ways by which we can increase our revenue so that we can reduce to the barest minimum the quantum of uh, debt. Budget is expected to be for the people. Budget is a vital uh, tool in, in directing the part of growth, the part of security, the part of uh, economic improvement for people. It's not just some figures. Uh, it's not just some uh, uh, figures based on some assumptions. The, 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 the soul of every budget in any country is to lead to a, a, a collective economic improvement. We've been doing this budget of a thin year in year. How do we link the performance of this budget with the, the core uh, aim of shared prosperity? How, how, do we, how, how do we explain the budget analysis, for instance, so, to somebody who is unemployed? How, how do we talk to budget in terms of performance to, to, to people who are out of schools and so forth? We need to look beyond just looking at the performance of this uh, tool, policy tool, on the basis of numbers. We need to go down and ask ourselves, whose budget, whose impact? Wow, wow. We must commend the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria for being alive to its responsibilities. What are the takeaways? For us, the takeaways are Mr. Samambe's contribution about a budget being of necessity, predicated on the basic needs of man, talking about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, food, shelter, clothing, and of course, protection of life and property. And the parting shot of Dr. Oyetunde on taxes being the price that we pay for a civilized society. Uh, Abraham Maslow, in the pyramid of needs, talks about physiological needs. What do we need as a people? Now, the base of that pyramid clearly shows food. If we decide to use that as a basis for putting our budget together, honestly, it will indeed favor this country, Nigeria. Abraham Maslow did talk about it. And just ahead of food there, you, 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 you have safety and security, which for us, which for me is in shambles currently. While I know government is trying and working, that foundation should not be destroyed. There should be food, there should be accommodation, there should be warmth, there should be clothing. Now I didn't see so much focus on the base of that pyramid. And that's where you have everyone, any budget that is not addressing majority of the people may not have started well. The quote I put up earlier, um, Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr. said, taxes are the price you pay for civilization. Everybody wants a developed Nigeria. Everybody wants it yesterday. But the question is who's going to pay for it? Because of economic problems, COVID, downturn, Russia, Ukraine, this government has struggled with revenues, despite the good non oil revenue generation by the FRH, which is commendable. But at the end of the day, it's not enough to pay for development. And we have to go back to that social contract. The question is chicken or egg, the taxes come first or development? And in the end, it's both. If you really want Nigeria to develop, someone is gonna to have to pay for it. We conclude on another celebratory note. On Thursday, February 2nd, Mr. Nami turned 55 and he had the special honor of being congratulated by President Muhammadu Buhari. 
A statement signed by Malam Garbashin, who's senior special assistant to Mr. President on media and publicity, states that President Buhari warmly felicitates with the executive chairman of the Federal Inner Revenue Service, Muhammad Mama Nami, on his 55th birthday, praising him for making commendable efforts to raise government revenues, especially at this time of great need. Congratulations once again to Mr. Nami. Congratulations for the record-breaking collection performance. Congratulations for the Leadership Award and congratulations on your birthday. To our viewers, thank you for being part of this celebration of excellence. Let's do this again next week. Bye for now.